Okay, hello, here we are with The Art of Billy, and we're going to do how to draw Hiccup and Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon 2. So, and there's lots of uh, interesting pictures out there, and you can go and see them at the pictures now at the cinema. You can go and see Hiccup and Toothless and all the others doing all their stuff. But we're just going to get straight in. We're using the grid, and I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, and 1 to 9 down and you're just going to use shapes but also out there in the world you will find especially in McDonald's how to train your dragon uh, do a dot to dot remember using a grid system you can recreate uh, your own dot to dot just by following the points so on 3c we've got a kind of point there but we'll just draw I'm just going to draw shapes quickly so very very quickly and then get the detail up you can use the grid so here we have hiccups head and hair, his shoulder pad kind of comes off and his arm goes over to the B line. Again this using the grid system helps you to produce something fairly quickly and then you can build your detail up and this is a, a beginner's video so you've got the flames coming off the, the tool there off his flaming sword tool that's just because Hiccup does lots of things so we come down under the four line and again you can do your own little dot to dots for Toothless's wings over to the C and there you get his right wing going up and the kind of shoulder part again just enjoy drawing but using a grid system for beginners can really help you get an image down quite quickly and you can build up your confidence and then do it completely freehand if you want or always use the grid system remember how if you check out the how to draw Olaf video you will find in there that you'll be in such esteemed company as John Constable RA uh, one of England's greatest landscape painters so again toothless his head you get the shapes come round the side of his kind of cheek up to his eye socket and then up to his ear his ear is going to come over the D line and then come down and then he's got his little horns playing over you can detail those in his nose comes under the six line. And the thing with the grid, the wind in my studio is throwing stuff around. And the thing with the grid is you can just jump around merrily wherever you want to on the actual image and just work on parts. You got his eyebrow and his eye. black pupil, his other eyebrow, and his other eye going in and that's quite simple and then you've got his claw that comes down well his, his left hand down to his claws and his claw is inside the box and these are just lovely shapes remember the very beginning basics video on how to draw all the links to the other videos some videos will be at the end of this and you can just click on them and, and you can see how utilizing different techniques and using shapes you can put a drawing together quite quickly and So his shoulder's got to come up there. So let's get these shapes down rather quickly. And there's a mark for his wing going up. I'll just say about the grid that I've got on here as well. Uh, this is an A4 piece of paper which is 297 millimetres tall by 210 millimetres across. 29.7 uh, centimetres by 21 and the grid is three centimeters so that's how I've done divided the grid up on the actual page and so 
you can do that yourself actually put your grid on and it'll help you to produce your starting points for all of your drawings and so we're getting the wing going up here up to just before the F line hiccups or well, the shoulder pad is inside the square quite a lot there's his left arm coming down and remember this is a from a film it's a digital animation as well and you're using shapes to put things together and that's how they make all of these incredible digital films they create the characters in models and scan them into a computer and turn them into a skeleton and a kind of exo frame all built up around cylinders and cones and little shapes and that's how they animate them and then get them to move and become the film that you then see when it's all rendered up and produced out and you go and see it at the cinema and enjoy the film and there's his back tail as well I so just on the side of his head that comes over into the E square line and then his tail comes down and it's in between the middle between five and six and then it goes into the F line and then his real tail the spines go up and you've got a really lovely simple shape as his tail and then you've got the mechanical one that Hiccup made for, to for Toothless just going off into the distance with his little kind of dragon skull emblem that's in there so already you can see a nice shape is coming together there's Toothless's nose let's just get his eye coming in and one thing with drawings is eyes are very characteristic so if we darken up Toothless's eyes it gives you a, a kind of focus point in your drawing and you can leave that till the end when you've done all your work and then when you put the eyes in the kind of image comes alive so there you can see just darkening his eyes up a little bit makes him stand out straight away and that's a beautiful thing with drawing all of a sudden at different stages you see lots kind of appear very very quickly and it really encourages you to keep going so there's his eye there's his cheek line coming down so let's just get his nose in and he's kind of smile as he's flying through these fantastic clouds there's the side of his head I say so you've got his arm there a little bit of a wiggle he's nice powerful claws remember he's a night fury and he was in the first film kind of unseen and it was Hiccup who injured him that took out his tail that caused him to crash and they became friends and looked after each other and that's such a brilliant story in the land of Burke I loved how the sheep was just ripped off at the beginning <laughs> like zip there goes dinner and you can just put little, some little spines on his tail going back so straight away you can see 
useless coming together and we'll get his other arm his front claw front set of claws of his right arm coming in again just really nice shapes enjoy making marks and putting your shapes in and don't worry about making mistakes because remember an eraser is a drawing tool as well and you get to have incredible fun so there's the little part going back you've got his claws and his head going up to his ears Again, I'm using a 2B pencil here and you can just experiment making nice marks and as you make the shapes and you develop your skills so just like a horse he's got a saddle on there that Hiccup is holding he's got his arm and his leather kind of riding gear and that was one thing in the first film that I really liked is it's so similar to riding like a motorcycle racer and you'll see that in this film with and you've seen it in the trailers hiccups gear kind of looks like the safety equipment that motorcycle racers wear as his nose and his big floppy hair coming down he's got a bit older and riding a motorcycle is being likened as the closest thing to flying without leaving the ground and it's the actual physics of it so you've got his nose coming down and his smile and his hair off the side and that's the thing even with the push bike you can you enjoy that freedom and the wind flying past your face is just amazing so there we've got hiccup on and his hair down so we need his body which is just another shape and his legs again are just cylinders that come off just boxes and think about those kind of shapes that you would put together and there's his mechanical foot that he made after his accident at the end of the first film he makes his own mechanical foot so as he can carry on flying so straight away you're seeing how quick simple and easy it is a little bit of cross hatching there for what looks like padding which would be like leathers on a motorcycle racer just check out MotoGP and British Superbikes and the AMA and the Australian Superbike Championship and you'll see the bike racers you know just google and a uh, motorcycle racer like Valentino Rossi or Mark Marquez they are two of the top racers in MotoGP at the moment John McGuinness is a top motorcycle racer who rides at the Isle of Man TT road races and you've got people like Shane Shaky Byrne and Josh Brooks and British Superbikes and you'll see like these guys look like riders who are riding little like dinosaurs and the racing is phenomenal as they go around the tracks it's absolutely stunning and they do liken it to actually flying so there's hiccups and they like his, his armor here on his wrist and on his shoulder they have padding in on their leathers to actually protect them so here we've got the back of the saddle going on to toothless and then you've got his wing coming off going under a five line goes right over he's got a little point on his wing and that goes up right to the five so very quickly you've got your outline 
and you can color that in and do all kinds of things uh, you know whether you want to use crayons pencil crayons whether you want to use watercolors here we've got his flaming sword now I'm going to use my pencil and just darken everything in so as it pulls everything up really nicely but there you've got an outline very very quickly of Hiccup and Toothless and then you can build the details so very quickly I'll put the shadows in and when you put in the shadows in if you squint you'll kind of helps you as you're doing the quick shading in he's got a bit of shading coming down his nose I'll use one of my technical pencils just to put his eyes in and the thing with these is you don't have to keep on sharpening them which is a real bonus you just click on the top and it comes out and you get a very consistent line but it helps you if you don't want to keep sharpening your pencil and you've got lots and lots as his cheek shadow with his kind of smile on his cheek and under his chin and the left hand side of his face is all in shadow and again you've got, you've got a cloth that you can a little bit of tissue or one of the drawing sticks and you can smudge it and that helps the thing with these these technical pencils be quite good for the scales on hiccup uh, on Hiccup. Has Hiccup got scales? I don't think so. But anyway, on Toothless, all of his scales that are on his ears are kind of coming down. So let's. Oops. That's the thing. If you press on, press on too hard, you can break them. These little horns that are going down, but he's got scales all over his body, and you can just indicate a few he's like a flying lizard isn't he that's how what dragons are they're like giant lizards and the thing with dragons as well is you know, if you think about the flag for Wales the country for Wales you know, it's like did dragons exist well some kind of creature did you know we have crocodiles and alligators now they are giant lizards they're not just the small things not just geckos that pootle around you know they've got scales and they're quite phenomenally large and so we have the dinosaur bones in museums that you can see and they are thought to be giant lizards so the fact that there is a giant dragon-esque type creature as the flag for whales yeah you can just do hiccups scaly body a little bit did people actually see them up in Carlisle Cathedral as well there is like a Diplodocus Brontosaurus type long-necked dinosaur that is cast in bronze on one of the tombs in there so people saw some kind of big creatures which is where possibly the legends of dragons come from and over in uh, Cambodia in Angkor, I was about to say Angkor Pork, which is the capital city of Terry Pratchett's stories, the Discworld series, there is a Stegosaurus carved into the doorway on one of the buildings, on one of the temples. You'll see those buildings in things like the Tomb Raider films, and they've been used in lots and lots of films because it's absolutely stunning. Well, these are all four, five hundred, six hundred years ago, well before dinosaurs were actually discovered which I think is quite interesting and quite fascinating but all of those things that were drawn and painted and sculpted left lots of legends you know the old Norse legends that have become how to train your dragon which is quite fascinating so here we've got and we're gonna draw this in quite quickly as you can see we've, I've just put a load of scales in so if I use the side of the pencil you'll get different marks and 
here we're putting all the dark in underneath Toothless's wing. You think the light is coming from this kind of direction and also from the flame. It helps you when you're actually pressing on, you know, and the harder you press on, remember this is a 2B pencil, the darker you'll get. And you want a bit of shadow underneath there. And here we have his wrist coming down to it, holding on to the handle on the saddle that he made. Just sharpen my pencil again a little bit. And so this is control. But if you use the side of your pencil you can cover a bigger area faster. You know, and you can paint this in. Oh, there's his, I've missed his foot off, his real foot. So he's got a stirrup there. And his foot kind of comes out a little bit and there's an extra little bit of a control. to build your smudge in. Again, use your tissue paper and you can really push that around. And you can get the tone. There's a really nice highlight on the back of Toothless, on the back of his wings. So you don't need to go too far. needs to be nice and black all the way over to the edge of your paper. Again the same with underneath this wing. See how quickly you can fill in a large area. And that's the fun with drawing, you can do something very very quickly. I mean so far we've just been going for about 20 minutes and you can see how quick it is to develop a drawing from very simple beginnings using a grid. So here I'm gonna utilize the dirt and I'm gonna smudge around because Toothless is a kind of grey base and so the shadows are all black. So if I push that around, we can then build on that. And if you want to get the highlights around, you can clean up with an eraser. <laughs> and you got a nice little bit of wing. I say you've gone over. You want to really sharpen it up. Hit all these scales. And you get a darker line, a dark claw. Underneath his left chin. Tail going off to the back is darker. And this is how simple and how much fun you can have drawing your characters, and you can do any of them out of How to Train Your Dragon. If you just grid up a photo and then do your grid, you can recreate. Whichever is your favourite character from any film. So here we're seeing just very, very quick. And 
nice dark shadow on his left leg coming down. And we can just start adding some detailed shadows onto Toothless. And they really make around his eyes dark so that his eyes and his pupil really stand out. It's just using nice lighting effects. To make it all work and by looking at the image and studying how cartoon characters or characters in films are lit, you'll learn about light and then you'll enjoy your shading more as you're recreating your own drawings and paintings. So his right arm is quite shadowed. So now we need to do his right eye because that's quite dark and shadowed. Let's make his little horn stand out a little bit. Dark line over his left ear. Again, this is a basics how to do it for beginners. And the longer you spend on your shading and your drawing, the more detailed you can make it. This is just a very, very quick 20 odd minute drawing that we've done that you can then take these techniques and do them to any character that you want. So let's darken Hiccup. too far around his ear. Let's get the shadow in under his nose. Darken down by the side of his hair. That is quite quick and quite simple. Now for the flames you can already use some that's already on some pencil but just press on very very lightly and that makes it work and you can smudge it with your finger and you get the highlights but also you can take off some of the dark areas let's just detail up his eyes and his nose again a little bit more and, that, and then you can just smudge it on the clouds just very very quickly in the background you can smudge all around using your dirty tissue and you can get the effect of clouds very very quickly anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video as I say, this is just a very quick how to train your dragon drawing Hiccup and Toothless using a grid. Do you like it? I'm going to do one of Valka in a moment and you can click on the links for this and my other how-to videos at the end. Please do subscribe and like this video and do your own drawings of Hiccup and Toothless. I hope you've enjoyed the video and seen how quick and easy it is to actually put something together using a grid of some of your favourite characters. Thanks for watching. Ta-da!